Car accident updates. We have to talk about some numbers and some gloomy things here on this show. A couple of years ago in 2020, at the start of COVID, I did a show on car accidents. And what we noticed back then was the roads were eerily quiet. The traffic was way down. So the number of crashes, the number of auto accidents was down, some say 50%, but the fatalities had a spike early on. And we discussed that two, two plus years ago. People were just driving a lot faster. So we had a spike of that. So that has since somewhat resolved itself because now the traffic is a lot thicker again, right? As most of you have noticed. So uh, roughly there was about a 50% decrease in accidents, but a 50% spike in fatalities for several months in 2020. Um, we have the, the numbers I've talked about in the past, and I want to update you on this because this is an alarming trend on the number of deaths on the roadways. 2017, 37,000 deaths. This is just the United States now. This is just the United States. 2018, 36,000. 2019, about the same, 36,000. In 2020, the numbers started coming up. That was, that was the first year of COVID, 38,000 deaths. 2021 was, sh showed a big increase at 42,000 deaths on the United States roadways. And th that is an 18% increase in just two years. And that is very alarming. The reason I, I prompted, was prompted to do this show was Dr. Peter Atia. His website is peteratiamd.com. He had an article in September of 2022. He t entitled it, The Epidemic on the Road. And we have discussed this for many years, actually a couple of decades now on this show, about these numbers. And you can see this uptick. Now we're in 2022. Of course, we won't have the numbers now, but... The first quarter of 2022 is showing another increase even over 2021. So it's not heading in a good direction. So we're just bringing awareness to this. This is a, for the most part, unless there's mechanical failure, failures or whatever, totally preventable issues. On a recent prior show, we talked about sleep. We've talked about sleep a lot uh, on this show. We even talked about changing school hours so teenagers got more rest and we noticed that traffic accidents went down, so that's a factor. There was a statistic by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. You can pop this online, easy to find. Distracted driving caused over 3,000 accidents in, uh, 3,000 deaths, excuse me, 3,000 deaths in 2020. Many believe, as I believe, that that number is actually higher, then it's higher than, than that amount, than 10% of, uh, of deaths caused by distracted driving. Okay, so these are, these are big numbers, right? That's 106, 109, 112 people per day in the United States that are dying on highways. Okay, so those are the traffic deaths. Then we can talk about the number of accidents, and there's a ton of them. So we talk about, say, 110 people dying in, a tra in traffic uh, related uh, collisions each day. There are 16,000 accidents per day. And just in the United States, this is not worldwide, just in the United States. About 6 million accidents per year uh, in the US. Out of that, some, some think the number is about 3,000 injuries in that. Not everybody's injured in every accident. There are some fender benders where there's a reportable accident, but nobody got hurt and everybody's fine and there's just some car damage. But about half the accidents lead to somebody being injured, about three million, and some say about two million of those injuries are somewhat permanent, meaning there's gonna be a permanent residual, whether it be neck pain or an ankle sprain or, or something like that, okay? So those are really big numbers. And what I talk about in prior shows is when you get into an injury, unfortunately, like a whiplash, a, 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 um, an injury of the neck, a sprain strain of the neck, which is very common in these accidents, you need to get that treated. So you go to a chiropractor, right? You go to a therapist, you, you get that, that treated, and you get it treated early on before it becomes chronic. The sooner you get a sprained ankle addressed, the better it's gonna turn, 
turn, o turn out in the future. The, the, the quicker you get a whiplash injury treated, the lower the chance of having something that's more chronic. So I'm just going to talk about a few of my recent patients that we have. Um, I have a, a woman in her early 20s. She got rear-ended on the highway, one of those stack-up type of, of accidents which are too common. Now she has a concussion, concussion from the airbag neck pain and so forth. She is getting better with three or four weeks in now and she is going to probably fully resolve. But you know, she's in her early 20s and she's fit and athletic and so forth. But in the meantime, she can't do what she needs to do at work. She missed some work time. She's not working out right now. Rest has been um, compromised because of the concussion. She's a coach for, for a, a, in sports. She can't be doing that right now and so forth. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's a, a serious detriment to her lifestyle right now. I have another woman, she was pregnant and got in a car accident. Luckily, it was a minor injury. She's got some whiplash, we're taking care of her. She is 70, 80% improved in a couple of months. So she will likely fully resolve, so that's another one. I have another man who's coming in, gosh, he is in his late 20s. And he was in a, a couple of car accidents. One was in his teens, and now he has chronic low back pain, now 15 years as a residual from that accident that long ago. And then he, uh, several years later, he got into another accident which caused a more chronic neck pain problem. And he's only like 28 years old. So we're starting to address this with him now. He's only a few visits in, but we're making some gains in his lower back. So not only get injuries taken care of early on, but even if you have a chronic problem, chiropractic and other therapies might be able to help you. But we all need to collectively look at this and understand that all of these traffic rules and regulations are there for us all to protect us all. And we should really concentrate on driving when we're driving. I'm Dr. Scott Fuller.